confused. All right, so I've got a square here that's going to appear on the page, and it says, of course, hi, I'm square, or I'm a square. Probably would have been funnier if it said, hi, I'm square. But um, here what I've done is in the translated, with the translated class, I've moved this element from its original position on the left all the way to the right. And if I actually just delete this class, save the file, and refresh, you see where the square was positioned initially. Okay, and so now if I go back, oops, type transform instead of translated. If I go back and I refresh the page, you see here all I've done is I've just moved it over to the right. A user's never even going to know that that happened. Um, it's just going to be there in the code. Okay, really important piece of information to recall. All right, so moving on. Let's talk about scaling. Um, scaling an element, all that it does is it increases or decreases its size. Once again, we use the transform property along with the scale method, and it just accepts two basic values. It's got a factor to adjust its width and a factor to adjust its height. Okay? Um, width is going to increase by two times. Height is going to increase by two times in this case. So let's go take a look real fast in Web Matrix. I'm going to go ahead and open up Internet Explorer. Let's take a look here. All right, so you see that uh, the object has, has increased in size. I actually have to go back and take a look at my CSS here. So if I look at scaled, oh, I actually I didn't increase it by a factor of 2 and 2. I just increased it by a factor of 1 and 2. So now if I save that CSS file, notice that the change has occurred there. All right, so next up, um, we'll go ahead and rotate, right? So you're going to go ahead and use the rotate method with the transform property and then insert the number of degrees. So I'm going to go back and add the rotated class to my transforms demo here. I'm going to launch the browser and do a quick refresh, and there you have a rotation of 45 degrees. Some pretty cool stuff, right? Um, you have to think pretty carefully about how you want to implement these, these different transitions um, or transforms. And so, uh, you know, don't just do it arbitrarily. It's really important. We've also got some, uh, some 3D rotations that you can do, and what happens is with these 3D rotations is you rotate it along an axis. So here we rotate along the x-axis, and notice that the shape appears a little bit smaller than it is. Same thing here, but what's happening is we're rotating the shape around a particular axis, right? So we're moving it so that it appears like it has depth. Unfortunately, on a screen, sometimes it's not going to be the case. Um, 2D skewing, you can use skewing, or rather you can skew a shape or an element um, by using the skew method. It's going to accept two different values. There's a number of degrees to turn the object around the x-axis, and then the number of degrees to turn it around the y-axis. And so what happens is we will have already turned this shape around, and I'm not doing a very good job of drawing there, we turn it around the y-axis and then back around the x-axis. Um, definitely go ahead and do a quick quick Bing search for this. Um, I think that you can probably find some better animations than what I'm providing you with right now. So don't be afraid to do that, okay? All right, next. Um, we got transitions, okay? A transition is a visible movement from one state to another on screen. And so um, 
to use the to, to create a transition, you want to use the transition property and then set the value as the property that you would like to change. Okay, so we're gonna change our background. And what we're gonna do is, is that's going to occur, or we're gonna implement that transition whenever we hover over an object. And I've I've added, whoops. I've added, notice, that, uh, that hover declaration there, okay? Or sorry, I've added hover to, uh, to the, uh, the selector, okay? So um, this can be done with the transition property or by using specific properties for each. I'm gonna demo this in just a second, but you have transition, transition property, transition delay. Uh, transition is a shorthand for all, all four of the other properties below. Um, definitely use the individual properties first before you go on to use transition as a shorthand. It's a, it's a great way just to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing first. Right. So let's go ahead and take a quick look and do a demo here. So I'm going to transition the background here of an element when I hover over it. Oh, transition is already there. So we're going to do this um, with a button that's on the screen. Okay, you guys have probably been wondering, why is that random button there? Um, this is why. And it looks like I need to open this back up again in the browser. Oh, look at that. That's exciting. It's really exciting. Okay, so all that happens is when I hover over the button, it slowly transitions to a different color of orange. Okay. And so you can see in the CSS, what I've done is I've got my transition property. I set it as background. The transition duration is over a, a time period of two seconds. And I actually, I can go ahead, if I wanted to change this to, to blue, I could do that and just type the actual name for it. And then if I open this back up again, the browser, now you see that it transforms to blue. Right. All right, so next, let's talk about animations. Um, transforming is, is static. It happens. A, a user might not be knowledgeable of it. Um, animations, on the other hand, make objects or make elements on a page appear as though they're moving. And so unlike transitions, uh, we've actually got to implement a rule here called the keyframes rule. And that allows you to adjust the timing of an animation. And so what this one's going to do is, is we're going to move from a blue background um, into a yellow highlight 50% of the way there. And then we're going to transition to red to finish out. And so our animation name here is glow, which has to be the same as the selector name, um, which is preceded by the keyframes rule. Okay? And this is what I was mentioning earlier and couldn't quite recall for whatever reason. Um, but then notice that I've got my animation duration is five seconds. So let's go ahead and see this in action here real quickly. So I'm going to add Oh, real fast, before I, I show you that quick demo, um, here are all the properties in isolation. Um, really important to take a look at those after you download the slides. Okay. Oh, before we move on, let's take a look at that demo real quickly. I don't know why I typed glow. I want to type animated. I'm going to save my file. And then I'm going to launch it in the browser. And look at that. We've animated the square. Went from blue to yellow to red. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you end a presentation, OK? As a quick recap for everything that, uh, that we've talked about today, we reviewed graphic effects, then 2D and 3D transformations. Um, thanks for joining me once again. I look forward to seeing you during our next module, where we start talking about JavaScript.
All right, welcome back to module nine. Sorry, recover. All right, welcome back to module eight. We're gonna start talking about JavaScript today. I'm Cullen once again. Um, right now, let's go ahead and get started with understanding JavaScript and coding essentials. Um, this is really fun for me. This is some of my favorite stuff to talk about. Um, we're gonna hit up Objectives 4.1, manage and maintain JavaScript. Uh, more specifically, talk about what JavaScript is. Uh, talk about functions and variables in JavaScript, and then uh, just really quickly touch on jQuery and some other third-party libraries. Um, we're gonna talk about how to update the, the user interface with using JavaScript as well with uh, Objective 4.2. Um, more specifically, locating and accessing elements, listening and responding to events, and then also updating the content of elements. Um, some of the really cool things that you can do with JavaScript and HTML. All right, so um, we use Java, JavaScript to, uh, to build interactive applications. Um, speaking of Java, Java and JavaScript are definitely not the same thing. Do not confuse those two things. Um, so anyway, HTML5 and CSS3 are awesome for creating engaging, like beautiful websites, but they're not interactive without JavaScript. Right? We need that programming language and that programming power of JavaScript in order to make the, the wonderfully interactive and engaging websites that, that we view on a regular basis. JavaScript is, is a loosely typed scripting language that's interpreted by a browser. And loosely typed means it's not super rigid. You don't have to declare a bunch of, of uh, file types and other things along those lines. Um, I won't get too far into that programming jargon because it can definitely bog down all the wonderful things that we're doing here today. It's an entirely different course, in fact. Uh, but it changes how elements in, in an HTML document act and respond to user input. And so uh, we use JavaScript to create scripts, these files that, that are essentially step-by-step -step instructions that tell a browser how to respond to events, like a user clicking a button. Um, the file extension, by the way, for, uh, for JavaScript files is JS, just in case you missed it. We can connect our JavaScript to an HTML document in, in ways that are very similar to, to what we do with CSS. We can either embed the, embed the JavaScript um, into a, an HTML document with a script tag, and that actually can be placed inside of, of the head tags, or it can be placed inside of the body with your code. Um, and then two, you can link a separate JavaScript file to the HTML document the same way that you do with CSS. The difference is that our type is different, right? We have text forward slash JavaScript, and then our source here is also going to point to a JS, .js file. Okay? Keep those things in mind. All right, so let's take a quick look at JavaScript in action, just a really basic example. And note right here, I embedded the text using script tags, okay? So we'll open this up. And uh, what, what's gonna happen is I've got H1 elements, I've got script here, and what's gonna happen is it's going to, to access the document the document object, and on that document, it's going to write hello world. So let's see if hello world shows up. See, it was a boring website. It's not anymore because it says hello world, right? I don't know. I think that's fun. 